Hey, welcome to Repair University Live OE Edition. We are thankful you are here today. And hey guys, Mark King, uh, Doug came back again. Yeah. <laughs> it's a three-peat. Yes. Or four. It is. Or five. Three-peat. Yeah. Three, three. Okay. Three so for three people peat. that that think you can't do this show more than once, we now have a victim or witness. Well, we're out of month testimony. though for this we have year. So next year he's going to have to come back six times and you know be Michael Jordan. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <goodness>. <laughs> Here can we go. Can we get a picture of him like hugging a trophy? Yeah. Yes, two tree peats. Oh, <laughs> awesome. All right, well, we have got a lot to cover today. Yeah, it's going to go more than an hour. I can sense it already. So get comfortable, pop some popcorn, uh, pizza, whatever you're uh, doing. Or if you're on the West Coast, you're probably just now getting a little just bit of breakfast yep. um, and getting to it. So today we're going to talk about General Motors. Um, save this show kind of to last. We wanted to make sure that as their repair, certified network repair program kind of rolled out, that we'd have some of that for the show. Um, but let's just get into it, yeah. um, guys. So basically, there are really, with General Motors, four ways to obtain OE repair information. You can get it through your estimating systems. Mm -hmm. You can get it through third-party sites, such as your all datas, um, maybe... Um, Mitchell. Um, yeah, Mitchell kind of is, yeah, a little bit out there. Um, for this, for General Motors, there is an OE free and there is an OE pay. We're going to talk about the differences between those and then how they might affect estimating um, as we go through. But first, let's start with ICAR, right? RTS. So that's my third party pay site. Technically, if you're not a student, um, you're not considered, I guess, platinum status, and you don't take um, two courses a year, you would have to pay for this. It's a whopping $200 a $200 year. A year. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole lot to pay. Not a lot of money. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I would, if I was still just, if I was just a field adjuster, I would pay this out of pocket yeah. to be able to have this information. Just make your job easier. Oh, that you'll work. pay for. Yeah, that I would pay for. That you'll pay for. No, but I'm not paying for anything else that's on your estimate lines. <laughs> <laughs> that's a non-included operation. <laughs> <laughs> and no one else asked for it. You're the only and one. You're the only one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Glad we got that covered. All let's right. Let's make so some phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with the uh, RTS portal. So I start every day there. We talk about it all the time. I want to see what the latest and greatest information that they've put out. But specifically, if I want OE information, I click that OE information tab over there on the left, and then I find the grill emblem for what I'm looking for. As you can see, Cadillac and Chevrolet are right together. If I scroll down a little bit, well, you'd see the GMC logo Not there. Because but they're in alphabetical order. But maybe. <laughs> Depends on whose alphabet you're using, yeah. Larry. What's the Brooklyn alphabet? So, <laughs> don't answer that question. <laughs> I set that one up. <laughs> yeah, she, <laughs> she kind of realized she had On to edit that. On second thought, right. Uh, but either way, no matter what you hit, it's going to take you to the same spot, right? So, um, if we hit OE information for Chevrolet, we get um, a screen. As you can see, RTS and the iCar team up in Appleton, Wisconsin, continue to add to this. They're always, there's another tab, it seems like, every time we get in this. Yeah, and that's, and that's one of the things about uh, RTS. You know, depending on what manufacturer you have, they have different things you can click. And General Motors is a lot more than most other manufacturers in the iCar yeah. website. But I think even they keep 
coming up with new more, things. Yeah. To it's put just, out there to help us. There's just more information daily. Yeah. That's where it's coming from. Yeah. yeah, and they group it really well. So let's start with how we use it. So first of all, everybody wants to know about position statements. Um, there is a link there for GM position statements. Again, for every OE, ICAR has put those in one spot. You can go and find them really quickly. Yep. Um, and for in this case, if I click OEM position statements, um, it's going to take me to the Genuine GM Parts website. Now, that's different than a couple of other OEs we've looked at throughout the year. A lot of times they may even have the position statement there. Um, in this case, GM wants them to always be accurate. Yep, and, the, and you, so it's basically a link to their site, so it's, it's up, as up-to-date as you're going to get. Yep, so that you know if they make some changes there. Yep. Um, if you go through there, there's a lot um, there. They have more than some of the other OEs that we've mm -hmm. looked at. We're not going to cover them all. Um, but let's start with the one that set the world on fire this mm -hmm. summer. So GM issued a position statement on bumpers, yep. on vehicles that are equipped with ADAS. And pretty specific here. Mark, what, what's GM's position on bumpers? Well, <clears throat> you know, first of all, I was talking with General Motors. And the first part there, General Motors, safety is our overriding priority. When I was talking to General Motors, that was almost the first two minutes of the phone call. So bottom line is, is that um, they want to make sure that all their uh, safety systems work and therefore you can't repair the bumper covers. Yep, you can't use aftermarket. I can't no, use recondition. No aftermarket, no repair. Um, I, can't, I can't make any repair. I can scuff and paint mm -hmm. as long as I don't go over 13 mils of material. Right, which um, means we got to check the millage. Right, there's yeah. nothing in here that says within a certain distance of a sensor. It just basically says if the vehicle is equipped, and it tells you what they consider the technology of the vehicle to be equipped with. It's got yep. that list there in that yep. um, second or third paragraph down there. Um, it tells me if this, then you can't do this. Right. And pretty simple. And they do a really good explanation of explaining why. It's mm -hmm. because we don't know what materials it's made out of. We don't know what primers they've put on these bumpers. We don't know what's been done to them when they've been reconditioned. It's, just, it's similar to what we saw from Benz mm -hmm. with their radar systems and any shops who's, any of the shops who have ever worked on Mercedes-Benz and maybe painted a bumper more than one time, realized they had an issue with their, you know, radar sensors and systems, and that was on a high-end German car. Now we're seeing it on, you know, once again, we'll go back to that Chevy Cruze we did with Jason that time uh, in class. You know, you're talking about a $17,000 base price car that has this technology in it that can cause an issue, not some hot, you know, $100,000 vehicle. You know, and, and pretty much every collision, not every collision, but pretty much, is going to is it going to have a bumper? <laughs> what was it? And I'm going to be speaking completely. It's a bumper impact. Out of the back of my head here, so we know where that's going to get us. But was it Mitchell a couple of weeks ago that put out a thing that said something like 70 percent of estimates have a bumper on them yeah. or something? Yeah. Um, and that was around plastic repair as well. Yeah. So um, when this came out, what was interesting is a lot. We issued the position statement, put it out on Collision Hub, shared it around on the Facebook groups, and we always had somebody come in there and says, "That's not true. GM says you can repair." No, and they even give you a diagram mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yep. Yep. to make sure you understand. They had to go with the old hieroglyphics to be able to show you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In case you were thinking you could do this, <laughs> yeah, that's the a no. answer is no. <laughs> and we're going to find that that's a great trend as we go into the repair data from General Motors. They tell you what to do, and then it's almost before the, before the position's over. Mm -hmm. They go, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that maybe you're going to do this, and we're going to tell you no again. Exactly. Yep. Um, so just to reinforce it. So it's You know, and part of that's a design trend. They're putting the sensors under things so you can't see them. Yeah. So there, it has to see through it. If that sensor was like, you know, a, a little plug on the bumper or something, this wouldn't be as much of an issue, but it is because it's under the bumper. Yeah. And I've had a couple, you know, uh, people complain about that, go, that really can't be the case, it can't affect it, whatever. Uh, maybe, but that's not the always job to research. Yeah, because a guy who barely made out of high school knows more than an engineer. Yeah. The, the repairs are all variable, right? So how can they possibly take a position and say it's okay when they have no idea what you're about to do? Yeah. Can't. No. Um, especially these day and age what we see online. I have right. no idea what you're about to do to yeah. the car. Uh, so the other thing that they said there is that we do have to check mills, and a lot of people are like, mm -hmm. how do I check mills on plastic? Well, there's a tool for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry, what's that tool cost? Uh, it's about 1800 bucks. I, I like the higher number. Usually the more expensive the tool, it's usually the higher the number goes. Not that yeah. it does something different. It just reads more more thicknesses so i think shops are going to probably have to buy something like this well if you're going to be on their certified program this is a required tool not right. specifically this brand even though they give you a link and how to buy it but i'll they be honest you with you from. i researched it I, I you know i use a, a kilometer they don't make one of these for plastic and wood so we have it for concrete and other stuff that we can you know they have them for in ferrous and non-ferrous this is a rarity to try and get something that reads wood basically, and, and, and uh, uh, plastic components. So you might be yep. kind of stuck to this particular model. Yeah. So they've got it there. we got to have it. But it's a good point to make that now my painters 
are as important to the OE process as the technicians welding or sectioning or, or doing any of those repairs. Um, so I, I believe there's 400 plus OE position statements or I'm sorry, repair procedures around refinishing. Um, that, that's now an important part. And so who is checking mills? Who's, you know, if I'm gonna repair, even though GM says I can repair a scratch, by the time I sand that down and repair that area and put primer down and then I'm gonna blend out, of course, the rest of the bumper, when I get to that opposite side, where am I at? Right. Um, That's why I got to reduce enough of the <coughs> thickness of the material that's there already. I mean, we yeah. used to always say, you know, paint doesn't kill anybody. Well, now, you know, besides well. the painter, <laughs> now you have a difference of opinion here. And I'll be honest with you, it could be worse on, especially like on a GM or like, you know, Benz who uses the same type of technologies with their bumpers. Um, you could have an issue where that car doesn't react right um or inform the driver the right way and the driver can wind up in an accident if you put a quarter panel on the wrong way as long as you don't get into a subsequent collision event you probably might be safe in that car because it's not in a collision or you heat up a rail cherry red and pull it yeah okay drivability wise the car probably drive the right way as long as you get don't an hit accident. anything yeah. yeah those don't hit anything but this here if you spray over these sensors and stuff like that and you think you have a clear lane and you don't look over your shoulder because we're all lazy nowadays, like the backup camera, no one turns around anymore, and you just go to change lanes, you could affect somebody else right. because somebody put too much paint right. on a I always, panel. When I'm working with painters, I always tell them it's kind of like the whole beer goggle analogy, right? When I, when I haven't had a lot of beer, I make really good decisions. If you're plus six on the beer goggle lens, yeah. does it affect your vision and your decision-making ability? And every painter looks at me and goes, yeah. And, I go, well, and, and not that we can do drinking beer and painting. Yeah. Well, at the same time. that's a shout at out to Ron Cohen. I usually go with the time. You know, like <laughs> 11 o'clock at night, I'm pretty good with my decision making. Around 4.30 in the morning when I'm at the ATM machine asking for money, there's really no reason I need money at 4 o'clock in the morning at the ATM machine. Well, occasionally there's bail there. Yeah. So <laughs> we got to get to that. All right, so let's go back to the position statements. Um, obviously, we're going we're gonna to jump over the obvious. Mm -hmm. We know how they feel about wheel repair. We know how yeah. every OE feels about wheel repair and reconditioned wheels. And that doesn't change. That. Yeah. Um, safety repairs and inspections after a collision. Huh. After a what? A collision. What do we do? Which is kind of anything. What are we looking at? We're kind of in the collision business, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So this would be after any collision. Exactly. Is that a, is that a big collision? How do you define it? Small right, collision? that is the Every collision. Every collision. collision. It's just every time. It says any any. A shopping cart yeah. hits the side of the car and puts a scratch into that's it. A that's technically yeah. a collision. So any collision on every General Motors vehicle that's going to cover GMC, Chevy, and Cadillac, mm -hmm. you will do these things, period, no questions asked, do not collect go, or do not stop at go, go to jail, You whatever. haven't played Monopoly yeah. in a while, yeah. I haven't played Monopoly ever. <laughs> I wasn't good at that game. But um, you, if you detect, um, so you will inspect the following components. If you detect any damage, replace the component. If you detect damage to the mounting po point or the hardware, you can try to repair. If not, you need to replace. And there's a long list of stuff and there. And you may not find anything, but you still have to take the time to inspect it. Mm -hmm. And you got a document that you inspected. Yep. Right? So maybe that's an Isn't that kind of like the 400-page uh, booklet you read that time when we were doing the blueprinting class? Yeah, 400-page? <laughs> that was the Cliff yeah. Notes version. And this is an accident with or without bag deployment. There's nothing well, here. Well, so. And, that, and this, it, this is instructions, and last week we did the SOP show. This becomes an SOP in the shop. We have to pull the information, and this is during the estimating process, mm -hmm. too. The initial inspection. Absolutely. Yeah. This you is know, this is no different than when you go to the doctor's office, and maybe for a podiatrist, there might be something different. But if you go to the doctor's office because you think you have strep throat or a cold, what's the first thing they do when you get there? They okay. take your blood pressure. Okay. They take your weight. What does my weight or my blood pressure have to do with me having a cold? But once again, the doctor's watching his liability mm -hmm. to make sure right. it's like, hey, listen, you know what? You're, you're, you're five foot one, you're 397 pounds, <laughs> and your blood pressure's, you know, 400 <laughs> over 20. Yeah. I mean, I think we might want to check your heart out. You know, they're going to check things out on you that they're going to see what's going on along with whatever's wrong with your, your cold. throat is the right. minor right. issue. Right, right. Yeah. Why don't you, and they do it every single time. You go on a broken arm, what do they do? Yeah. They take your blood pressure. What does is, what is my broken arm have to do with my blood pressure? They want to make sure they yeah. cover the liability, say, you know what, you're okay. Yep. You know, so at least if certain things are in the right parameters, they can say they're doing a triage, yeah. and yeah. they're just finding out what's going on, and then they ask you a long line of questioning. A car can't talk to you. Just like when you take your, your pet to the mm -hmm. vet. The vet has to go through a couple things. What was the dog acting like or the cat acting like? How, you know, how have they been sleeping? How have they been eating? And they try and come up with right. what 
It fits in the scenario. You can't talk to a car. Well, thank God they don't do the thermometer well, thing. Well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the way you scan them today, I can almost talk to the car a little bit. Yeah, yeah she can questions a little bit. on how it's feeling. So, but the car still it. can't tell you what kind of pavement you were on yeah. or what kind of weather conditions. Yeah. You got to talk to the folks that were in the car and find yeah. out what was really going on because it all comes into play. Right. You know, who was there in was what seat belts? Who was sitting in the car? Right. What was in the car? And this is part of what we talked about last week as well as when people ask me, how do you feel about photo-based estimating? And I'm like, it's great for insurers, but it's really dumb for shops mm -hmm. to do it. And this is why, because you are the collision repair expert. General yep. Motors has told you that you can't do anything or assess or do anything with our cars until this is done first right. on every car involved in a collision. And I don't know how I can check the steering column, the knee bolster, panel brackets, braces, seat belts, et cetera. It doesn't show a up in a photo. Yeah. So my ability to assess that vehicle through a photo is, is, is gone. Right. So what I love about this though, is as you go through this, even this is all still free, we're still in mm -hmm. the free information that's available, um, perform the seatbelt operation fu uh, function check. And if you don't know what that is, well then you click here and it tells you what that is. And that's that 400 yep. something pages that yep. we had brought out during yes. the blueprinting show um, to talk about it. You have to check the roof and headliner mounting points. This is an extensive list, brake pedal, all, I mean, we, I think on the blueprinting show, we figured we'd probably have about an hour. Yeah, well, we spent, we a, just on the, the overview of it in the blueprinting show, we spent like 20 minutes. And a half a forest. <laughs> <right down. Yeah. laughs> I and thought about buy, printing it and, out and again. And you got to buy two printers because it's cheaper to buy printers than it is printing cartridges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then I take them back to Office Depot when we're done and go, it didn't work. Uh, so they're like, this is the 27th time you've returned a printer. All right. <laughs> you know, the list could seem like it's really lengthy, but you, you also don't know the history in the car. Mm -mm. Unless you bought that car brand new. Yep. Was, was the car worked on before? Maybe they never did the job, right? Who's going to be liable? Oh, well, I guarantee you probably every, I mean, I, Larry, I know your shop does it, but I, I, I this happens a lot, right? Mm -hmm. I get a shop that tells me we're great. We follow the OEs. We are, we're, we're one of the better shops in the country. And I go, <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> and we go and visit. And this is one of the first things we go to and mm -hmm. no one's doing this. They're like, well, nobody's doing that. Well, you know, you know, what's you funny to. is, is the only time you don't have to do something like this for a minor accident is if it's your own personal car because you know your car. So listen, I know I don't have to check the seatbelts, but I should scan my car because I don't know what's wrong with the car or not. But that's it. Any other car, you're doing it, like Doug said, for your liability. You don't know who worked on this before. You're you don't know who did what. You know what, maybe the assumption a car gets out of a dealership and the guy drives down the block and gets blasted and the car's got three miles on it. Okay, maybe you don't have to do this whole entire, you know, rigmarole well, you thing. Because you don't know what's you, up with the steering wheel and the You have to find out though, what's wrong with what happened in the car. So yeah. if the guy just has a key scratch down the side, brand new car, drove three miles, terrific. Knock yourself out. But anything else, even brand spanking new, but as you soon as you get to the accident, you, you don't know what's going on. And you don't know on. the history of that car Any either. Collision. Yeah. yeah. Right? So it goes on, if you go down um, the document a little bit further, and it tells you, um, if you detect any damage, replace the component. After any collision, you're going to inspect this. We're set, steer column, get down there. Seat belts required. And then we get into impact sensor replacement. Mm -hmm. So if there is damage, and it defines accident damage as a portion of the vehicle which is crushed, bent, or damaged due to collision. An example of this would be a moderate collision where the front of the vehicle impacts an object. If the vehicle has an impact sensor forward mounted of the radiator, it has to be it replaced. must be replaced. But you know, this, this is not new. This has been in GM. Yep. I mean, I gotta be honest with you. This has probably been in GM since 2004. I can remember back to iCar classes, yep. mm -hmm. you know, that, that it said that GM, you know, change, you know, they used to have the zone thing yep. that they used to have on yep. their, their, mm -hmm. their procedures. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, in this zone, if the, you know, the left side's damaged and it's hitting the left front corner, change both the sensors because it's technically in the zone, it's in the area of collision. Right. So they haven't changed this in, well, Look, already they updated it in 2014. Right, this 2014. Is not, this is not new. But as of so, 2014, it's, it's been, you know, right. 10 years, it's been out. And then if you're reading it and you're thinking, yeah, but, and you do this, GM goes, no, 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 no. no do not try to determine whether the impact sensor is undamaged. <laughs> Replace so, the impact sensor. Yeah, right. so they're very, That's very pretty clear straight. on this. Now, here's what I would tell you to do as a shop. I would think if I'm a shop that worked on General Motors vehicles, and especially if by some chance you're associated with a General Motors dealership, go back and look for 2017, how many bumper covers did you buy? Because if we're following this, if that vehicle was equipped of a sensor that is forward of the radiator support, mm -hmm. I would say even if it was kind of back there. There's a collision. Right? You should have bought 
at least one sensor, probably should have bought two, if how, depending on how the vehicle's equipped. I'll show you something even worse. That would how be an interesting statistic to pull, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd love the even, estimate. Even, I'll take it even further. One. How many ride supports have you done on GM cars mm -hmm. in the last two years? And, bought and how many times did you buy? Because we all know GM usually has those satellite sensors on the ride supports. How many, you know, sensors did you buy? Now I think the the, the GMC, oh, well, not the GMC, but the GMC Suburban Chevy uh, Yukon. I think it has one sensor in the middle. Um, so some of them have two, some of them have one. How many sensors have you bought with every single ride support? Because technically, according to this, right. you should have bought a sensor for each one of these. Should have bought for a bumper do? cover, right. right? So if we think about it, if if we go back and say 70% of estimates or whatever contain a bumper cover on them. So 70% of the estimates should also contain a, a, a sensor when you're talking GM. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I went back and pulled that, so if I'm a shop and I want to know how good I am and am I following procedures and am I pulling the procedures, reading and then applying them correctly, it's kind of like Doug, when you were here for the Chrysler or FCA show, hey, for every bag that's deployed, you should have had a steering column. Right. right. Instead of one to 1,000, basically being the ratio. So this is... When we well, talk well, about the simple well, things, we can tell well, you right off they, they, whether you're they, good or they not. They won't pay for a sensor that's undamaged. That's not, that's that's, not what the procedure says. Yes. Right. You yeah. have right? to change it. If you haven't followed this, mm -hmm. and that car goes out and gets in another accident, yep. and how many people think that their airbags didn't deploy right? How many times it have we heard that? Listen, all, listen, all the time. Know, we do that with the engineering right? stuff all the time, and, and we read ED, the EDR, and you know what? Sometimes it just wasn't enough. Delta, change of delta V. Rarely do we come across an airbag that's been repaired incorrectly right. or not changed properly. But yes, we have come across where airbags are in there. Mm -hmm. It's empty. Mm -hmm. Someone actually did work to the well. And in you this, got a in this thing in there, situation, you know? it, if if I had that situation come up and somebody goes an attorney and goes, "Hey, I'm injured because I don't think my airbags went off at the right time," and they go, "Oh my gosh, we're going to sue General Let's Motors." Let's pull the history. Nah. And then car. General Motors springs in their engineers, and you all meet up at Copart or IA mm -hmm. or wherever you're meeting, and yep. they go, "Oh wait, it's been repaired. Oh wait, the shop didn't change the sensor. <laughs> we're out." Um, oh, I have issues with the bed, with the, the the derm was not right. You know, the the airbag control module was blank. It wasn't working. You know, and that, of course the airbags aren't going to go off. Yep. You but know. That's, it's, a, it's a liability concern. Well, and we talked shop. about that with that shop in the Midwest. That's, ex you know. Yep. Bottom line, here's yep. where it was. <laughs> and it rested solely on his shoulders for $8 million. Yep. So um, we'll go down a little bit. If, if you have the pre-inspection the pre routine for any collision damage mm -hmm. vehicle, it involves the seatbelt inspections required after collision. They're pretty extensive. There is a position statement here you for know, it and what you do. And I'm going to say something real quick about the the level of the estimator having to understand how a vehicle is repaired. So let's just walk through this. So we put a bumper cover on the car. Now we know the bumper cover is a collision, so therefore if we have that sensor forward of, we got to replace it. Now in order to disconnect that sensor, don't we have to disconnect the battery? Yeah. So now we disconnect the battery, and what does that set up for all of the other ADAS or potential alignments or all those things? So we, right, so we got basically a bumper cover, and we've got another 10, 15 lines of electronic resets and different things because we put a bumper on because, and if we don't read this, we're going to miss all that. Yep, new world order. Yep. These are our seatbelt inspections that we have to do, pretty extensive as well, well. It's like we talked about last week on our SOP show. You know, the, the, these are, GM's actually giving you an SOP. Yep. Yep. You literally print that out, put one through 20 on there, and there's your SOP already set up for yep. you. GM did it for you. You don't even have to do it yourself. Right, you're <laughs> just still mad over the peanut butter spoon. Yes, yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> So. Well, I don't eat peanut butter. <laughs> I like the jelly. Well, so are we going to use a spoon for the jelly or a knife? Spoon. I just got to know. Okay. Spoon. Apparently, and a long a, spoon or he gets cranky. Yeah, so he gets cranky. cranky. He gets on his hand. <laughs> I hate getting right? that sticky stuff. Yeah, no. Yeah. And I like English muffins because they have the nooks and crannies to hold all the melted butter. You should have been here last week, Doug. It's <laughs> a little too much. I'm, I, you, <laughs> you realize what we're getting to here is that the process of damage analysis is now lengthy. Mm -hmm. There's no more of this guessing and to write in a quick sheet. You've got research to do. Mm -hmm. And while you may have worked on a Malibu last week, it could have changed, right? This is all live information that's overnight mm -hmm. updated. You've got to re-review the information. Yeah. Well, I mean, through our conversations with GM and prep for the show, there's something we don't necessarily, we, it's not that we don't like it, we, we think it's kind of vague. And so we, as we were preparing, we decided to pull it out of the show. We're not going to talk about it yeah. because we talked to GM and they're like, write up what you think the procedure should be. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look at it. Yeah. You know, no promises, no guarantees, but we may right. send something and they may go, okay. And six months later, this procedure may change. Yep. And, and, and it's all we'll have a better explanation of something. And living. That's all. Organizations yeah. like, you know, mark what you do. You mm -hmm. work with technicians and find something that you send to the OEs all the time. Absolutely. And go, hey, can we do this? And they go, yeah, it makes oh, sense. Oh, yeah, Let's that's a good that. idea. Well, you know, so yeah. um, 
we'll hit another hot one that's here. Again, there's a lot of them that we're not going to cover because they're just kind of basic. We've covered them all. Obviously, everyone wants a position statement on pre and post scanning. General Motors does a really good job of this in the repair information. Mm -hmm. So if you'd been following the repair information all along, you wouldn't have been missing the inspection routine, the seat belts, the <laughs> sensors. Oh, wait, the scanning. Um, so again, this one's from 2016. So even in minor body damage it's or glass replacement. Yeah. And later on, we're going to talk about cameras where mm -hmm. they got cameras all over and sensors all over. Well, Pretty much every scratch is going to require. Yep. That scan. goes back to the class we did with, with, um, with Jason mm -hmm. when we took out the front windshield and yep. he found all that information, mm -hmm. you know, about that particular cruise, about what you have to do to realign it and changing of the mirror, not the trunk lid that works with the camera. It's the mirrors that actually work with the camera. Yep. So yep. if you change one mirror, you got this whole nightmare of stuff. Yep. Or, right. or keep in mind, just r and a mirror. Yep. So that's one thing that we have to, in the service world, I'm never r and i I'm taking something off to replace it because there's a problem there. Right. So detach and reset r and i r and r in the mechanics world are the same thing. So if it says, if you replace the mirror, that's the same as if I r and i the mirror. So we yes. have to make that correlation <laughs> in the collision industry and pull that over. But basically, you're going to scan, you're going to pre and post scan every General Motors vehicle, mm -hmm. um, because even if it's um, even if it's just a key scratch, because I detrim it, I'm now post scanning and putting the, the car back together. Car. <laughs> so you've, you've moved stuff around. <laughs> yeah, so it's just kind of a no brainer there. Even if you don't like the position statement, we don't like, we've been very vocal about that. We think they're crutches. You will find all the documentation you need mm -hmm. um, in the repair procedures. Yep. Um, General Motors basically says, hey, there's two tools that we believe should be used, and they've got those tools listed in that um, position statement. And you know what? Well. That's great. A position statement should be for something like this. Mm -hmm. Change of tools, mm -hmm. uh, ch you know, an addition of tools or something like that. That's what it should be there for, not little pages like we were talking about yesterday, Doug, where they're just ripping pages out of the, 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 the manual because nobody wants to read them or look them up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody you know? wants a position statement to make their job easier, and the truth is you're going to miss all the information to repair the car. Well, the again, you've got, to, you've got to delve into all the information. Do your research. It, it's just required. Yeah. I think the OE send them out. I always tell people they're, hey, dummy flags. <laughs> Basically, is this information has been here for forever because you chose to read it. I had to give you a, hey, dummy flag. Yeah. Well, look at how many people complain about not having dummy lights in the dashboard anymore. <laughs> Because right. they want a dummy light for everything. Well, even when the dummy light comes on, they still don't take it in for service. No, they don't. All right. So we are still in the RTS portal. We're still working with ICAR. Imagine that, right? Um, we click back over ICAR news um, and information. Obviously, the RTS portal puts out a brand new story every day. Some of them are about General Motors and some of them aren't. Um, if you're staying up to date and looking at it daily like we do, then you're in good shape. But if not, you just want to see a collection of what applies to GM vehicles, you would go in here, click here, it'll show you. Here's basically everything that's there. Um, scroll down, you may find something about what's new with the truck, things you need to be paying attention of, a replacement rail procedure. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of really good information in here. Um, now, as you saw the first story that had just came out, GM has a magazine. It's called GM Repair Insights. It's kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm being told, pay attention to the next one. Someone may be in it. I don't know who that could be. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, really? <no. laughs> but uh, it's really great. I've used these for years. I and mean, we always talked about my, my lower drawer in my desk at the insurance you know, careers. I had this one in Toyotas mm -hmm. and everybody's because this was as close as I could get to technician training. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to go to all the classes that everybody else got to go to. Um, so you can also sign up for this and have it sent to you. Um, or you can click here and when the new one comes out, there's ICAR announcing that it's out. Here is the magazine. So mm -hmm. lots of great information. They've got good information on the new truck, which was kind of the talk of SEMA. I think everybody and their brother had a 2019 Chevrolet truck in their booth. Um, so I guess GM was helping everybody out with that. Mm -hmm. um, the article in there this month on how you would enroll and start being a part of GM Certified Collision Network if you wanted to do it. Um, they did a backup um, article on their position statement on the ADAS bumpers. So if June's um, paranoia wasn't enough, we've revisited it now. Um, and then there's an article in there on collision considerations for the Chevrolet Bolt. That is actually written by Jason Bartnan. So that came from the uh, ICAR RTS people there as well. So they're kicking in and helping. Um, lots of stuff here that you can read. And we'll just go through and look at. Um, this is sectioning on the new Chevrolet Silverado. Oh wow, that's the diagrams from the repair procedure in the website. Mm -hmm. So when people say the OEMs are to make information easier to find, you can't get any easier than what General Motors has it done. It just costs 20 bucks. Yeah. You can find it. Yeah. It just costs money. Yeah. Or so there's, the, there's or a ton of stuff available free. free. No, this what I'm saying, I yeah. but at the end of the day, when people say I can't find it and they don't have it, they got it. Yeah, it's there. 
20 yeah, bucks in at least two hours. Wait, kind of yeah. like the right. guy the other day that, that uh, last week, I think it was, was looking for the bolt information. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, Larry. <laughs> Don't get too far ahead. All right. So <laughs> we're sticking with the RTS portal. Uh, we're back here, and it's GM's recommended steel matrix, the repairability matrix. I've carried this with me for almost, God, since 2006. I've had this thing printed out and laminated, and I always carried it with me. It helped make repairability decisions. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to have when we get to something a little bit later. Um, but the repairability matrix tells you what you can and can't do when um, each steel is a certain way. Um, some of the steels from General Motors are actually stamped. So if you don't know what it is, you, if you find that little symbol on the part, it'll tell you what it is, yeah. but you can come back here. Um, and it'll tell you what you can and can't do to it. Is it a cold repair? Is any heat allowed? Um, so you can go across. And it'll tell you if you can use heat, what the temperature limitations and timing requirements are. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and Doug, we know you Get feel about this. Get your stopwatch out. Yeah, I can do it for 90 seconds, but only twice. But I don't know what happened to that car. And if four. that car comes in and there's been a pre-repair done to that area, well, then now I don't know what their heat right. was on it. So now repairability is completely out because right. I've probably exceeded the heat At maximums. At the end of the day, it's cold repair. Cold yeah, repair. That's just cold where you got to start. Yeah. You know, don't, don't, don't use the heat. Yeah. Uh, you know, always try cold first. So that means all of my stud guns and all that stuff boop, are out. So when we say cold repair. Mm -hmm. um, I get so tickled at the 97 pins <laughs> on a wheel lip and like, you know. So anyway, <laughs> if we go back in here. This is new. This has kind of just popped up in the last probably six months that I've been playing around with RTS. This GM technical documents tab. Um, it takes you over here. I kind of feel like this is in the works and we're going to see a whole lot more here because when you click on some of those at the top, um, it, it feels like they're going to be adding a little bit more there. But if you go down to tech procedures, you could click frame procedures. This is all still free information and see what's there for sectioning. I know there was a question probably a couple of weeks ago on a Chevrolet truck frame rail, what you could and couldn't do. And people were arguing back and forth on hydroformed or not, and you can't right. do this or that. Here it all is and it's free. Stop asking questions on Facebook. Just go find the answer. Um, what I love about this is there's always that you can do anything to mild steel. And so we get in a lot of, I don't want to say arguments, dialogue, basically. Because we're not arguing, we're just telling mm -hmm. you the truth, and we're not going to argue with you. When we, when we hear people say, is this a repairable quarter panel or not, or is this door repairable or not, and there's actually, General Motors is very specific on what you can and can't do to mild steel, which would be most exterior panels mm -hmm. on their vehicles. Right. So um, it basically tells you cold repairs can be performed unless okay. there is a kink. If the damage includes a kink, the part should be replaced. So if we think about a wadded up quarter panel yep. over a wheelhouse, mm -hmm. it's, done. it's a kink. Yeah, it's, over. it's done. I'm replacing yep. the panel. Doesn't matter if I can glue pull it or metal massage it or make it all silver and shiny. Right. The, the OEM tells me if it's kinked, it's gone. We're into debate, end of story. Or a real body man. Well, and then, and then and we also have to look at what a kink is. A kink, a lot of people think it's just folded over flat. No, it's past 90 degrees. But also, when you pull it back, does it come back to the same state and shape? Can we right. get it back to that point? If it can't, it's a kink. Yep. Not that I massaged it and worked on it in 97 glue and pulls and fill PDR and then, pills and then behind it. took the grinder out and, yeah. and was exactly. able to make it look okay. Yeah, that's not, that's not what this is. Right. It also says here that even though it's traditionally a mild steel panel, right, mm -hmm. I can't just decide where I want to replace it. Right. I do have to follow where the OE says that I'm going to replace that panel at. Yep. So follow the cut lines and recommendations. You know why? That often comes up. Yeah. Because you're not thinking about what's underneath there. So like seat belt attachment points for a, for the shoulder. You don't want to be having any kind of a weld joint anywhere near that area. That's a critical zone. That's worth the trying to point out. Cut here, cut here, or here, but never here. Right. It's not about the panel I'm replacing. It's about the panel it's attaching to. Uh -huh. We well, covered that on the quarter panel show yeah. when people were asked, why can you not do used quarter panels? It has nothing to do with that used panel, although by the time I drill out all those spot welds and everything, I really can't yeah, right. put a panel back on. It's not all about that. It's about where is that going back to and what's going to be required to put it and back. And, it, and they're all systems. I mean, every different piece and part that's on that car has been engineered, mm -hmm. and we're re-engineering. So we got to follow what the engineers say on how mm -hmm. we fix it. That's yeah, important. It's the, it's the whole car, right? Mm -hmm. The system, not the part, the system. Right. And that was a good thing that you were discussing yesterday in show prep, is that I think as technicians, we're focused on the part I'm doing, repairing, or replacing at that moment, and the OE sees the car as a sum of its parts, it's a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why repair procedures are written the way they are. It's not about your level of technician skill to weld this, that, or this. It's about the whole car and what's right. going to happen after. So 30 right. years is not a qualifier? 
Yeah. No, because no, you could be doing it wrong for 29 years. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> or you could have 30, 30 years of one year experience. I love that <laughs> analogy. So yeah. Yeah. Um, now let's get into the OE site. So ICAR's got a lot for us. But then the OE also has a free site. So if you go to the Genuine GM Parts um, website, you'll see where it says Collision Repair Manuals. This is all still free. That's where we mm -hmm. want to go. You enter the make and model year that you're looking for. Oh, wait, Larry, I'm looking for a bolt. Oh, boy. Huh. <laughs> you know, I always walk around the shop looking for a bolt. I wonder. <laughs> I you, look busy. It's in your top you're not looking for your bolts. You keep losing your nuts. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kristen. Uh, but, um, <laughs> But this is the one uh, we're gonna we're gonna dive into this car because it did come up last week yep. as we were prepping oh. for the um, for the SOP show and we were like it's like a gift from heaven. Um, but anyway, um, so if I look for the bolt, <laughs> this is there what is. happened um, this on Facebook. So uh, it, uh, the question on Facebook was a picture of this 2017 bolt in a state of teardown, mm -hmm. right? Assembly. When sh there's no glass, uh, you know, we were all kind of guessing what we thought had happened to this car. I was going to hear it. But it's it. still not on a bench. Um, it's, yeah, <laughs> but we'll get there later, Larry. <laughs> Hold on. So um, this thing came up, and, and basically someone was asking for the underhood dimensions after teardown. Well, what sparked Which means us, they didn't pre-measure in the estimating process. Exactly. Okay. But I, bet also, you, I bet you they scanned it, though. Okay. Very yeah. important to pre-scan it. Um, it also means that I wasn't looking at the information, because if I go in and look for the repair manual it's on right the there. free site, oh, Man. look, oh, boy. there are the dimensions What's available that? for me to free. And those numbers, in case anyone's confused, those are measurements. I'm not sure why some people <laughs> thought those numbers weren't measurements. That's um, not mill thickness? No, or that cars have to be symmetrical. That's not a thing. Is either. that the numbers for the from my bookie for? Yeah, go the, ahead, bet those numbers, numbers on the lottery. Week? Go ahead, oh, bet those. that's a lottery number. <laughs> yeah, it's like an Illuminati puzzle. They have secretly <laughs> hidden the lottery numbers in a GM and, 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 and you know what's sad about this is that whoever sent that actually had to post that, was waiting for a response. So clearly they have a smartphone yeah. or something. They could have gone right to the website and got this yes. without asking the question. Right. Well, I mean, as we go through this, this is not a knock to the technician. I do appreciate the technician yeah. reaching out and asking for yeah. help. The technician had found this and had gone to the shop foreman, and the shop mm -hmm. foreman is the one that told them that that wasn't measurements. Right. Right. That's what really scared me. Yeah. But, but, um, but the technician didn't know that's measurements. You know, I got a little bit of a problem with that, too. I know, but yes. I'm, you're saying it's 141 pages for the free manual to this car. Mm -hmm. So not only do I get the underhood dimensions, I get the door openings, I get the trunk, I get underhood measurement or underbody measurements. They give me all mm -hmm. the dimensions and body point measurements of the vehicle. They're right there. Mm -hmm. Got a good tram gauge, go to town. Not exactly what GM wants or what you should uh, do. Three-dimensional, but it's better than nothing. But they're there. So had that technician had had the the free site information or the estimator this would have all been answered we wouldn't have had to go to facebook now the other thing that scares me is that because that vehicle is in such a state of teardown mm -hmm. and they didn't know that what else did they not know about a 2017 bolt so if we had just stuck with the free information now is that diesel yeah it's biodiesel <laughs> biodiesel yeah. no it's it's a hybrid it's an electric it's it's, a, it's not a hybrid it's, it's an it's all it's electric, electric right electric. so yeah. you know because no. it's electric what is, runs that battery and if you've taken any course or read anything about it there's probably a ton of information about just disconnecting the battery and I'll bet you that battery was still connected all right so if we go through here um, the first thing that they're going to show us in the free information is part identification so remember we go back to that matrix now that I know what the part is I could go back to the matrix and decide right away what is repairable what isn't repairable so as I'm writing the estimate I don't have to have an argument with my technician on whether he thinks that upper apron could be repaired because, no. Nope. And it's nice, they also give you the material thickness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have an idea of how thick of material you're working with. Great for setting welders, mm -hmm. great for doing um, any of the other things that I need to do. So a lot of free information there. Now, um, we're just gonna go with the tie bar because in the question, that was what he was asking for measurements on and, and probably I'm voting um, based on the windshield. I'm thinking it was a deer hit. I'm, that's my vote, right? <laughs> um, so, um, but if we had to replace a tie bar in the free site, I get a lot of information on how to do it. The only thing in the free site that doesn't happen is everything that is hot linked blue doesn't click. Right. So I, and in the free site, I can't necessarily go into the mechanical side of the information. So disabling airbag systems, the high voltage inspection, the negative battery cable, that information isn't there. The free is limited. That's yeah. why I always say go to the pay. Right. So even if I wanted to try to go find that, it's not going to be in that free. I'm just getting the body repair manual. I am not getting the electronic and mechanical data there. Um, but this is just enough info 
to start a an good estimate, estimate mm -hmm. right? That's yeah, all it is. It's an estimate. Again, yep. back to you're going to have to spend your time. It may not be enough to write a good estimate, but enough to point you into where you need right. to go for the estimate. Because in it's some in cases, when I disconnect the battery, I may have a whole slew of other exactly. things, alignments and calibrations exactly. and other things that have to happen. So yep. I want to be able to go down that rabbit hole. Um, but here's what I thought was interesting. So when we get the removal process pretty simple, when I get to mm -hmm. the replacement procedures for this upper tie bar, it tells me that I must position it using a three-dimensional measuring system. Mm. Correct. Mm. Is that a tram gauge? That's not a tram gauge. Is that a tape measure? It's not a tape no, measure. A it's not railroad I'm, ties I'm and the strings. Gauge, I would be point number one. <laughs> point number two <laughs> is where the tram gauge measured on one side, and point number three would be the tram gauge on the other side. Wouldn't that be, and I have two arms sticking out with my feet on the ground, so wouldn't well, that technically be a tripod with three points? Isn't it if the part fits? I mean, if the holes line up, Kristen, then obviously no, there's no... No, you get the step drill bit. That makes uh, the holes bigger, and you can adjust the fenders easier. But if it lines up, it fits, right? It's yeah. perfect? No, well, perfect. There's yeah, so I don't need to okay. measure at all. There's no structural so damage. So yeah. what you're saying is we got to use the fender to test fit to make sure the core sports in the right spot? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's totally so, right. Okay. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Doug, this is what we get okay, This is the on real Facebook. World. This is what you get on Facebook know, these guys. Nobody I, wants to measure, and, you know, they all think as long as the gaps are okay, the, the, the structure must be okay. Yeah. And, oh, I get and they don't that. realize how much movement to the structure of the car can be before even really from the 1980s. Yeah, but you, you know, don't know what you don't know, and you feel like you're a really good technician because you've checked the gaps, you've checked panel fitment, and you know, car's good, and it could still be 10, 13, 15 Absolutely. millimeters off, totally and you don't good. even know. It doesn't yeah. say use three-dimensional measuring equipment if you have it. It <laughs> says <laughs> use three-dimensional measuring go equipment. Back to the, the engineers again. They're assuming that yeah, the shop have. is fully equipped with three-dimensional measuring, I, no, proper no, welds. Stop. Because I don't think the shop, I don't think they always assuming that. I think the OE basically has a position that says if you don't, don't touch our cars. Right. Exactly. right. That's and the that is a general. And, and, and the OE has the right to say that. States allow states, towns, you know, whatever cities allow you just to open up a shop. Right. You got to hammer a jack, and you can pay your, you know, your fee to get a sign. Hey. You're and in. if you're a shop <laughs> and you have any character, you have any morals, if you have any integrity, well, you wouldn't touch the car either if right. you don't have the right equipment. So. Um, it's not an assumption. It's basically a statement of this is the baseline. You mm -hmm. will either have this and you will work on our cars or you won't. And that's the way it's going to go. Well, and a lot of the three-dimensional measuring systems are all about the lower. Then they sometimes they'll just throw that upper tower thing. This, yeah. is, a, this is a different world than <laughs> 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do for the upper? Well, I got these train gauges. Gosh. No, you don't. That's <laughs> not <laughs> right. No. Um, and then we go back down here and we have spot welds and then we have um, mag plug welds. So mm -hmm. we have a combination. So again, it doesn't say spot weld if you can, mag weld if you don't. It says you will do 16 spot welds and you will do four mag plug welds. Well, the, the reason is, is because the, they want you to use spot welding to duplicate the factory procedure you know, watch the type of metal that you're welding on. And the only time you're probably going to see plug welds is because there's no access to the backside right. so that, you know, the right. arms can get there, no single-sided spot welding. It's not optional. So no, it's, it's not. Just Th like that's a, the procedure. Yeah. That's what it calls so for. So let's go back up to the measuring system. If I'm going to work on General Motors vehicles, I must have three-dimensional measuring. I must have a spot welder. Mm -hmm. It's not optional when I want to use it. It's not. It's broke down. It's in the corner. No one's looked right. at the tips in the last 75 years. It's, you've got to have it and you've got to use it, right? It's pretty, pretty basic thing. And in the file, we're going to have to have test welds for the spot welds and test welds for the mag welds. And Correct. if it's multiple pieces, additional test welds. Correct. God, it's... That's normal. Uh, it did? Yeah. yeah. Every time. Okay, so what changes if I had the pay site on this A car? A lot. A so lot. Let's, <laughs> let's get in there. I will say that this is not necessarily the easiest OE that I've gotten into for a site. So you hit the AC Delco. You can link out to it through the iCar site as well and mm -hmm. take you there. Um, this is your pay site. Create your login and password and click register. I've not entered a, a credit card yet. It's going to take me to a screen um, where now I can choose service programming and subscriptions. Mm -hmm. I would go in there and choose it. A three-day pass is twenty dollars. A month is one hundred and fifty, and a year is twelve hundred dollars. So it's basically a hundred dollars a month. So if you're fixing a, a handful cheap. of those, it's two. I'd say twenty-five dollars a week. Yeah, yeah. it's nothing. If I was fixing two General Motors yeah, vehicles the, a month, it's I would. It's a line item too. Yeah. yeah, it becomes oh, the well, research. And like a lot, we've gotten a lot of people write in because we always tell you, if you buy a lot of parts from a dealer, ask them if they'll comp sure. you. Sure, maybe they will. Yeah, maybe they will. Maybe they won't. We've had a lot of shops write in and go, "Hey, I called my dealer and they comped me." So. Fantastic. Uh, shout out to Chrysler. I think Chrysler's done a lot of comping on that. So mm -hmm. that's um, really well. No pressure there, John Eck. Um, just saying. Um, <laughs> Erica's kind of got you. Did you really <laughs> just go there? I did. I mean, it was kind of, it was, 
It was, I need my phone. I gotta call my lawyer. It was easy. I mean, just you know, I mean, a little good Motor City competition. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. A little yeah. bit. Uh, so anyway, now it's a challenge. <laughs> um, after you do it and you pay. Um, you'll get the success that you have subscribed. Thank God. Hey, I actually back. congratulate you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> You've made it this far. Look you at made it this far. Well, your credit card's approved. I felt, so I felt pretty, had issues. Hey, I felt pretty good about that. I do. Card. I felt pretty good about that. Because I was like biting my nails. Is this one going to go through? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now your ATM machine will talk to you. Uh, yeah. Uh, they called me right after that transaction. Okay. Um, now, once you get there and you're done, you need to go back and refresh. So yeah. when you refresh, where it'll change from subscribe, it'll say it'll change to access your subscription. Yeah, don't get nervous that you like. Oh, what do I do? I just paid and it won't let me in. Just refresh the screen, you now refresh your browser, and, and that'll take care of it. Yeah. You know, and then one and one of the questions uh, from a lot of other OEs, you know, Internet Explorer, Chrome, or. Yeah. Firefox, is there a, any problem with this Yeah, one? and there are tech requirements for it. So for instance, I could not sign up on Safari. I use Macs in okay. this office. I could not sign up on Safari. I had to go to Foxfire okay. um, and Chrome Firefox. to actually, Firefox, yeah. <laughs> I had to go to those to enter my um, credit card yeah. and get that confirmed. Okay. Then once it was done, I was able to go back to Safari and surf the site. Well, there you go. They should, uh, almost every one of the OEMs are going to be always Internet Explorer. Uh, yeah. Some will work with Chrome, some will work with Firefox. Safari probably really isn't supported that well. Like Foxfire movie. Yes, <laughs> with, okay. with Clint Eastwood, yes. About oh. the Russian spy pilot. It's not the one where he had the 45? No, no that's no. the, the, he never that's had a 45, he had no. a 350, he had a, a no, 44 Magnum. Oh, okay. That's Dirty yeah. Harry. Oh. And he had the auto. Did he have a gun in the Torino or the movie? He had, car? A, he had a gun in the, the Grand Torino. I, I, I didn't know we became Siskel and Ebro all of a sudden, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> People want to know what it's like to hang out at Collision Hub. This is Nobody pretty much there. <laughs> so, <laughs> Let's talk about the Godfather. <laughs> we're, we're like, oh, look, a squirrel. That's <laughs> shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Doug and Mark spent all their time just trying to hurt us, Larry. It's and like, uh, well, you know, like hurting cats. You, you just can't quite. You were separated by Doug and I. Yeah. You know, Doug's going, I, I should have just traded my ticket in. I could have went to a Ruber instead of this. He came back three times. <laughs> three times, yeah. He's got issues. His therapist he's, he's said to him he's got to get over he's these things. He's not fired yet. I mean, so everyone that thinks you can't come to the show and keep your job. I mean, I'm just saying. All right, so you're going to hit the refresh. You're going to access the subscription. You're going to live and die on the left-hand side of the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's where you are. Once you hit access subscription, this is where you come up. Um, you can... There's a lot of really cool things here, bulletins, recalls, et cetera, that you need to know. Obviously, you want to enter the van. If you don't uh, enter no, the van. Actually, you had to enter the van, remember? We found this out uh, uh, well, uh, yesterday. You could select the options, but it's going to yeah, take it's, you it's really forever. Hard. Yeah. We, we had to call one of our GM uh, mm -hmm. tech guys and find out, hey, listen, no, with that car, you're going to have to put the van in because yep. there's a longer way of doing it. And you know what? Just to avoid everything, put the van in. Yeah. And it'll just make it a lot easier. Yeah, that was, and that was for the camera aiming where we said, okay, so we just put it in real quick. I think we put it in for a, yeah. a CT6 or whatever yeah. and wouldn't find it. And you know, we called him. He goes, well, put the van in. Because yeah. I didn't know what the car yeah. had. Didn't until know. Hey, look at that. Larry doesn't work for GM, and Larry said the same thing, but nobody <laughs> listens to me. No, nobody listens to you. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy at GM that tells you, no, yeah. put the vid in, didn't you? I, didn't Larry tell you that? <laughs> I do want to say shout out to GM because we did yeah. call them a lot during the show, and yeah. they answered every time. Yeah, of course, you we had did to call have. I asked them how to spell GM. We had all four of us call at different times, <laughs> so it was not the same number over and over. How do you spell GM? <laughs> Yeah, like when you call BMW at the time, how do you spell BMW? You, you could have an option on a car where, let's say, it's got a camera in the mirror, but there's two different cameras depending on your trim level, and the VIN filtering takes that out of the equation. Yep. Yeah. You're, you're just going to get the information you need for that specific car. vehicle you're well, working on. Because they give you build sheets also. That's so we, another nice yeah. thing. It tells you all the options it, that are in there. We entered the VIN on our Chevrolet Bolt. This is not the Bolt. That, this is not the VIN on Facebook. I do want to make that very clear. This is a, a VIN I got from one of the dealers. Um, around so here's a VIN off a of Bolt 2017 Bolt. Um, we're gonna stay up there where the service bulletins are. Obviously, owner manuals are great information on tires. Mm -hmm. There are some cool things in there that you get to, um, and the pre-delivery inspection form is kind of cool. You can see that. What would, but we're not going there for the show. We're not going yeah. there. Yeah. But, but you guys can look on your own. <laughs> yeah. But so you're gonna hit the service manual now. Again, remember when we were in the free site, we went to the body manual. Now we're kind of here. But here's what's different. Before I can even see anything, General Motors is telling me all the way this car is going to kill me. 
So, yep. <laughs> and all the things that I need to do and to And that's if you've been a good person. God will allow you to die instantaneously and not suffer. <laughs> right. <laughs> so very similar to what we saw with Audi and, and some of the others, the Actun. You know, yep. got to acknowledge first Toyota before. with the with the, well, you know, with you the hybrids. If you don't accept this, you're yep. not going in. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I have to accept that, and then I get in. Oh, and then now I'm looking at something very similar to what everybody else, a series of drop downs, pluses, information mm -hmm. under, and things to go Same to. Same thing the dealer sees. Right, you can still do some navigation across the top. Um, there in the search menu, you have titles and you have documents. Search different things. Mm -hmm. You can search keywords like relearn. Yep. You can search scan, Camera, cameras, cameras, calibration. If I mean, you have a, a scanner that just reads codes, let's say you just want to, like, that's your pre thing. They do have a diagnostic trouble code list, so you can check it by al alphabetical, numerical order and find your trouble yep. codes and find out exactly what those mean. Yep. We had a question when we were at SEMA teaching a class. Well, what do I, what do these codes mean and how do I know? Well, Put there's a lot of different yeah. ways to get yeah. that, but you can go there. So for us, um, I will tell you this, compared to other OEs, when you get into that preliminary information, general information, other OEs have had a lot there, mm -hmm. even training material and things that we've liked. Not a lot there. Nope. So, but um, we're going to go into the body repair section. And so when we hit that, we get another breakdown and I have all of these different things to do. Um, and there's bumpers, fascias, there's trim and hardware. We're going to go into collision repair. I'm just putting a bumper cover on, Kristen. Do I have to go through all this? Yes, oh. you do. Now, for the <laughs> bumper cover, you're going to go to bumper fascias, right? Yep. For everything else in the car that's metal, you're going to come in here to collision repair. Mm -hmm. And then when I click that, what do we want to know? Do we want to know how to visually identify it, which may go back to the matrix, the, the, what the, where we were at the free manual that says these parts look like this. Do mm -hmm. you want to know specifications? Um, or do you want the repair instructions? Oh, well, we want the repair yeah, instructions. Yeah, we do. So we go to the repair instructions, and then here's a breakdown. Mm -hmm. This is the typical the stuff that we're going to replace um, in collision repair. And up at the very top, the first thing is, boom, tie bar. All right, so now I want to click it. This is what it looks like in the pay site. Looks pretty familiar, and it doesn't it? It looks like the free site, except yeah. now all yeah. the hyperlinks work. So there's a the, on the right is my free, on the left is my pay site. Really similar. The diagrams are the same. Um, there's. What's well, this? This is new design diagrams that they have. I love versus them. the drawer, the one-dimensional oh. type drawings. Totally more like them. a 3D type of thing yeah. that they have. These are really awesome. That's kind of one of the things I love about. And they're highlighting the, the weld points with red. But they never did that before. That this is kind of like what we saw with the cruise, where we did mm -hmm. the 16 versus the 17 cruise information. Yeah, the difference. It's, it's, it's evolution of the of the service data. Yeah, it's going to get yeah. better every year. But now everything that's blue is clickable. Yep. So when I'm in here, I can keep kind of following down the rabbit hole and getting to what I need to write a good estimate. So let's walk through that. So as we know, <coughs> here are the things. The first thing I have to do. Even if the bags haven't deployed, I've got to disable the system, right? One, because we're welding, but two, because we're, we're working in an and area. we're replacing where the sensor, too. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And we're replacing that sensor, which is going to be on our estimate. Um, here we go. This, this SIR disabling and enabling. I click on it. Boom. Here's everything that I have to do, right? Some very interesting things here. <laughs> One, it can't get above 185 degrees Fahrenheit, just saying. Um, but most likely never going to happen. <laughs> you can't drop a part either. So from a distance greater than 31.5 inches. Right. So yeah. that's basically kind of table height, right? Roundabout. OK. Take. So our Malibu here in the shop. It's 800 millimeters, 801. Yes. Right. 800, <laughs> eight, no, 800.1 Point one. millimeters. <laughs> we did a last centimeters. Like the conversion. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so if we think about that, and I'm going to be just flat out honest, I am clumsy as all get out. I will never get invited to the ball. Things are never going to happen that way because I just, I will trip walking to the bathroom. You're not going to a big time gala with no. a, a dress on, a big flowy dress and makeup I don't wear, and stuff like that? I don't wear heels. I don't want to break my ankle. But, <laughs> but we've had our Malibu for several shows here um, and it's up on the bench rack, which puts it above 31 and a half inches. Yep. Yeah, and if we think about shops all over the country, a lot of times when they get to tear down and disassembly, the car's up and parts are over. How many of us have gone to remove a bag or remove something, maybe it's a uh, headliner bag or we're taking a, something out, and we turn and we just, we just drop it. Mm -hmm. Happens. It happens. It's me a lot. Got to replace it. Yep. If it didn't deploy and I drop it from a distance of over 31.5 And I, inches, I'll pretty much say unless, replace it. unless you're a, a little person, you, you're going to be carrying it up here someplace, and if you drop it, it's going to be more than 31 inches. We did a measurement, and Larry's hands are about 31 and a half <laughs> inches off the ground. The so pretty much if you drop it at the knuckles, yeah. So yeah. if you drop it, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> These are the things that happen at Collision Hub on an OE show. Yeah, we, we make Larry carry stuff around research. with a tape measure. Where's Larry's knuckles fit? <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a measurement. 
So, but it's, it's you know, I, I mean, I've dropped stuff my whole life. Yeah. And you, you kind of go back, and as you're reading this, you go, oh, even us. Who I think we, your parents dropped you a couple of times, but okay. No, but I asked one time. <laughs> they said no? No, but. <laughs> they lied. <laughs> my Maybe. mom went into labor in the paint booth. Oh, okay. And that was before that you know, PBE a lot. was. Well, mom was still probably smoking because she used the filter to filter. No, mom never smoked. <laughs> but dad was in there. This was, we just had an old metal building and we would garden hose down. the door. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. And then whatever we were painting, you couldn't see the car. The whole room <laughs> filled up with fumes or whatever. And so mom had to open the door, stick her head in and go, honey, I need to go to the hospital. And he was like, one more coat. And then, you know. I'm on, I'm on coat 43 of the clear coat. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that may explain a lot. Hey, <laughs> oh, it does explain a lot. Yeah. Um, so here's the procedures for it. Um, disconnecting and reconnecting the battery cables, discharge processes. Because it's an electric vehicle, there is backup. And if there's OnStar, there's always backup that's mm -hmm. powering OnStar. So there's a lot of, of fuse pulling procedures. So it's not just pull addition. the negative and we're good. Yep. No. Nope. Yeah, no. Not anymore. Um, nope. So uh, a lot that has to be done there. Um, now it's telling me that in addition to the SIR disabling, I've got so to disable the battery. So I have to have battery. a document that tells me how to pull the negative battery cable? Yep. yep. I have a document for that. And here's what we learned, right? Mark. I love it. They are so specific on this. It says when installing the battery negative cable, fastener must, and that's in like capitals, must be installed with in at the one o'clock position in uh, relation to the center line of the vehicle. Very, very. Precise. Oh my gosh, that is that specific. And I, you know, I'm looking at the mm -hmm. diagram there. It's definitely at one o'clock to the center line. You know, how many people just disconnect the battery, you know, just pull it off, isolate it, throw it back on, no big deal. And, and what the hell is a Titan to 5km? Newton meters. Right, That's exactly. Yeah. Which means I have to have what? A torque wrench. A torque wrench. Yeah. Or they give it to you in, in, in a pounds. pound inch. Um, you still need a torque wrench. You still yeah. need a torque wrench. Yep. So it doesn't matter if you have metric or, or standard, you still have to have a torque wrench to tighten it. It's just not... Ah, ah, Okay, good. Let's go. That's the German with. good and tight. <laughs> good and tight. Good and tight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. How many guys have ever tightened a battery cable and actually loosened the post because that. they've always tightened it? Because you got a yeah. metal piece that's attached to basically something that's plastic. Yeah. Yeah. And if the battery's not brand spanking new, you could probably easily break that. The plastic falls apart. Yeah. You, know, you could have a problem. Now, after I've put it all back together, I get a warning label here that says, after you put it all back together and you turn the system on and the, and the back end, if you get an airbag warning indicator, um, it's not uh, operating here. Now the di diagnostic sy system checks I have to do on the vehicle. Boom, I can click that. It takes me through well, those Well, let's go to the top of the page here. It says, disabling procedure of negative battery cable. It says, number one, turn the steering wheel so the vehicle wheels are pointing straight ahead. Well, wait a minute. That's the steering angle st sensor That's that we're dealing with for the that. electronic stability control, which right. then relates to the cameras, which also do distance and angle. So just disconnecting that battery, we have lit up a whole bunch of other procedures on this vehicle. Yep. Yep. And those, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if I'm enabling the battery, you know, yep. Yep. turn it on, airbag light. And so there's these having these click throughs helps me as an estimator mm -hmm. to be able to dive in while I'm in that part. We've not even left the, the tie bar. Right. And I'm still going to go have to look for headlamp procedures, bumper reinforcement, bumper procedures. Uh, glass, the glass was out of that car. I mean, there's so much that I'm going to have to have and, on this. And specifically on that vehicle, the glass has to be OEM because the camera's got to see through it. Mm -hmm. So they're very specific in the glass procedure on that too. Yep, I'm going to be bouncing around. If we did have to do the diagnostic system check, GM is very specific about how and what order I will do those in. So it'll help my technician get through them. Or as Larry likes to say, we'll just take that um, to the dealer and get it done. <laughs> um, what I do love here, if you get down a little bit more minute of the details, when it comes to the installation, so we've just gone through everything it takes to get the tie bar off. Um, as we go through the installation again here, the spot welds and everything's there, I can also click in through the anti-corrosion um, materials, what's going to be required. Um, GM gives me the products and by brand and what's there and what I should use and why. But here's what I love at the end of the anti-corrosion document from General Motors. There's this little paragraph at the, at the end that says, cleaning of the interior and underbody panel surfaces is necessary when original galvanized or other anti-corrosion materials have been burned off during the welding and heating operations. Removal of the residue from the burning will require additional care in such areas as interior surfaces of box type construction, blah, blah, blah. So General Motors just gave me the written documentation I need to support all those line items I'm going to have in my estimates. So for instance, our quarter panel example, we may have 20 
six or so panels that have to be addressed and prepped, because of that. Yeah. right, yeah. at a tenth or two tenths a piece, it ends up sometimes being three and four hours of additional labor. Right. And when people go, nobody else asked for that, we don't get that, you can go, that's great, but here's General Motors telling me it's got to be done. Well, and, and everyone else brings police, yeah. I mean, I have to. And yeah. it's not just General Motors, it's every, every car. Yeah, everyone has But General Motors did a great job of they, putting they it in the right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they simplified basically. it. You're right. going to have to do this. You can't just throw a panel up and weld it mm -hmm. on and move on with your day. Now, let's go back a little bit because I want to say some of the confusion around that eight, that uh, June release of this year was General Motors has a specific position on bumper covers with ADS. That does not mean that General Motors is against plastic repair. So if you are in their manual, they do have some information on plastic repair. It's not as good as what we've seen with some of the other OEs. That's it's that's fine. It's plastic but repair. But they do as an OE acknowledge it. I, I get a lot of times I'll see people on some of the forums going, oh, he said you can't do plastic repair. Not true. No, not true. Always do say you can't do plastic mm -hmm. repair. Doug, you had some great examples of plastic repair instructions that are in warranty for the service department. Yeah, I mean, uh, sensor brackets. There's a procedure out there to, re to rebond those if they <coughs> fall off. Yeah. So. so there is plastic repair options out there. You just have to do what makes sense. They Basically, their statement on plastic repair is follow the manufacturer label of the product you choose and mm -hmm. then always have a safety precautions right. and follow those as well. So mm -hmm. um, I don't want anybody to leave the show thinking that GM is against plastic repair. They well, are uh, using, using like an L-shaped bracket of piece of metal with four rivets is not the way to do it. No, no, no. no. You just take, you, you take paint stir sticks, you oh. dip them in reinforced filler, you let them dry, then you stick them to the panel. Can I just use crazy glue? That guy hung off a beam with crazy glow, can I just use that? Just trust me. Do you guys have an SOP for this? Yeah, we're yeah. working on that. Okay. <laughs> Stick to peanut butter, Mark. Okay. Yeah, even suggesting it gets you slapped. <laughs> step one, you suggest it. <laughs> step two, gets you slapped. All right, so um, we all know and we've heard it. It's talked about. It's been all over the industry. General Motors is launching a certified repair mm -hmm. program. They kicked it off officially at NACE this summer. Um, and that program is being administered by Mitchell. Mm -hmm. um, and you can right now as a shop, go <coughs> and apply if yep. you want to. Now, it's not an easy process. So if you are on the GM Genuine Parts website, you go over to that last tab across the top that says for professionals, you click there, you go down and you'll see collision repair network. If you click there, it's going to give you all of the things you need to know about do I want to be a GM certified center or do I even qualify? So they have the core requirements. It's a nice little check mark list. So I, as a shop manager or an owner, can print this out, go through it, and say, um, do I meet these requirements? So first of all, you need to be a business that's been, that, that has been in operation for at least five years. So, and you have to have a verifiable credit rating. That's a, that's actually, it says or. Or. They say or verifiable. It or says possess or verifiable. possess oh, verifiable yeah. credit rating. What's really interesting here is yeah. these are the same requirements when I left the insurance industry for my DRPs mm -hmm. at, at the um, at one particular insurer. We just don't Wait. want to, you know, to refer something to somebody and have them be out of business next week. Right. Pretty simple. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you need to have a garage keeper spot liability policy with a minimum of a million in limits. I really think that's too low, but okay. Um, you need to have a lifetime warranty on your work. Um, which, if I'm the OE, I'm technically liable. I sent them there anyway. Um, you need to be able to have a CSI tool. You'll go through here. Um, the hardest thing I, I think about the program is they're at, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, Margaret, was it like the level two for ICAR? And there's two. only like about a thousand shops in yeah. North America. Yeah, no, and <clears throat> one of the things that the industry has to do is, is to educate up. And, but one of the problems we're having is stops are just educating to the minimum that they got to get to you to qualify for these programs. And this is moving so fast, you just got to keep going, you know, you know, get to level three beyond because these programs are going to get there as well. They'll raise the bar. They'll raise the bar. And then yeah. you'll Absolutely. be back out. Um, yeah. The other thing about this is you can't have one technician that holds all of these certifications. Right. You've got to have somebody in each department. Yep. Um, so for some of the smaller shops, if you've been the guy that always goes to all the training and has maintained all those um, certifications that may you may have to do some rethinking if you want to be on the general motors program. <coughs> you know, and the average First shop going to get a break. Yeah. yeah. Well, the average shop, from an educational standpoint and equipment standpoint, there's a, a fairly significant investment for a lot of shops that if this they're going to be their first certification. Yep. Yep. Um, the tooling and equipment list is there. You would go through it. Um, in the bottom, it just says here are your aluminum requirements. Up there at the top, here are your welder requirements. Your finishing mm -hmm. paint booth. Um, but you go through this. If you want more on the tooling and equipment list, there is a link there too. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes through. See your three dimensional measuring system? 
Yeah, that's... Oops, got to have one. Got to have one. Got to yeah. have one. Well, this is becoming, you know, years ago when I was teaching classes and stuff like that, and everyone would look at me, it's like, ah, oh, Larry, I'm not going to do this German crap. I'm never going to be part of the European program. That's them with their, you know, the crazy over-engineered stuff. Well, guess what? Now it's coming Just to American up. cars. Yep. You know, yep. everyday cars. They're starting to get more and more stringent. It's no longer... Most of these companies are going to be changing over the next few years. It's not going to be a rubber stamp anymore. If you just have equipment and you don't have, it, have to have any specific training, you got some iCard, great. No, you're going to start seeing more and more like this where it's going to become tougher to be on these OEM programs. Yep. Um, they got more accountability. Just, to not go over all, I think, seven or eight pages of this document, but just to touch at the top, you must have designated equipment to perform test weld destructive testing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're going to come in and ask you for that. Let's just hope the inspectors are also asking you to prove that you know how to do destructive right. testing, not and just that you the instructors know how to, I um, mean, the, the inspectors know how to do it, too. Well, it all yeah, ties yeah. back together from a liability standpoint. We talked about the bulletproof file. I mean, this is, everything's colliding together here. Right. It's all um, about safe repair at absolutely. the end of the day. Yep. Let's yeah. put it back together out. right. Um, the only thing that, one thing Larry pointed mm -hmm. out is there are some interesting wire requirements that are a little yeah. different. You need to pay attention to those because odds are, that's probably not in your shop right now. Uh, yeah, it's for the it's for the silicone bronze welding, which, as we saw with the Chevy Cruze, was our first uh, indication that GM's going towards silicone bronze welding. <coughs> um, it, it's required for certain areas and stuff, so you got to make sure you have the right wire in there. There are different wires for silicone bronze. Well, yeah. they also have the ER70S-4 wire as a requirement, yeah, ER and most shops have six. six. Correct. Or yeah. they sometimes have three. three. So, yeah. I mean, uh, now you might actually have to have a couple of different wires right. for, let's say, Toyota at one time was calling for the Dash 3. Um, you know, uh, most of the other companies were allowing Dash 6. Um, you have Honda that wants the uh, bowler uh, material for their, you know, and they say you can use it on everything for them, mm -hmm. but you have to use it for their ultra high strength steels or advanced high strength steels. And now you have a Dash 4, which in my opinion, might be a little more difficult to find, but you're going to be able to get it. Yep. So, you know, you, you, you have these requirements. These companies are requiring different parameters. You might actually have to have a, 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 a mag welder that actually has a sticker on it that says what wire is in there this or what four, company is it's three for. And yeah. Three yeah. requires a different or, gas. Or yeah. i got to store it properly, and then i got to make sure every technician in my shop knows how to change wire. Yep. Correct. Um, Which means without they have ripping to read. a liner. And right. listen, it's a lot more forgiving with steel copper wires than it is with the aluminum stuff. The aluminum yeah. stuff you really got to be careful with. Yeah, if you breathe on it wrong. Um, now, if you've gone through the checklist and you have checked everything off and you feel that you are ready to apply from the GM website, you can click apply, click and roll now. It, fair warning, it says it's going to take you approximately two hours of setting at the computer to fulfill an, the application. Mm -hmm. And you're going to need to have pictures of all the items that are on the checklist. Mm -hmm. So in addition to checking them off, take some pictures while you're there. I would take multiple pictures, serial now, numbers, etc. Now, do they et allow you to go into this first, look, and then go back into it? Probably. I, I didn't want to So do that you get the in. kind of checklist, so, so you find out and say, okay, now I know what they want. Let me go get my pictures so I have everything well, on that's my computer. That, that checklist that we oh, just went over right. is available oh, I'll for tell you free. what pictures yeah. they need? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's all there for free, and then they're telling you you have to have the pictures of all the things that are listed on the core requirements. So that core mm -hmm. requirement is that big, long two-page checklist. If you are confused over some of the tooling, you would go to the tooling and equipment, and it's got a little bit more detail there. They go down to you have to have a paint suit, you have to have welding blankets, you have to have gloves, you have to well, have... Well, they even go crazy as far as saying you have to have, you know, glasses yeah. and stuff, stuff like that. Stuff you're supposed to have in the shop, they're actually checking how, you know, down to the minute stuff. Yeah, so they're going to want to... This isn't... Even though the beginning of this feels like a DRP, and I know a lot of people feel like, oh, I'll set my, I'll set my OE certification program out like a DRP. They're not asking for pictures of your bathroom and that you have a secured fenced-in storage location and that you have a clean lobby with magazines from 1973. <laughs> they're just, they're going to want to know what equipment's back there with the technician, so you're going to have to have pictures of that. But like they said, it's going to take you two hours to probably sit down and go over that. Um, just dedicate the time, knock it out, or do it at home or whatever, but um, get all that information into them. And then... That doesn't mean you're on the program, it just means you have applied, and then I think the Mitchell people will take it over from there. Mm -hmm. um, if, you've, if they agree that you're ready for inspection, then they'll outsource There will be an actual physical inspection, yep. too. Somebody's going to come point. out and lay yep. hands on everything. Yep. Um, again, like what we saw with, I think, Subaru, you can't have one welder between your four stores. Right. Um, you're going to have to have, and you can't have one technician that qualifies all four of your stores right. anymore. Yeah, no. um, so I will say that. Um, there's some good things there um, that are there. So. 
Um, obviously, there's a lot to General Motors. There's a lot to that website. We can't cover it all in an hour show. Right. Next year, as because we're getting close to 2019, as the OE show evolves, we're going to get a little bit more granular on repairs. Um, great way to see the difference between the free and the paid. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say this, as a, as a estimator, or as an appraiser for an insurance company, there is not an excuse on this planet for you to really get anything wrong on a General Motors car because there is so much available to you for free. Yep. Um, so if you go find it. Yeah. You gotta go spend the time, right? but, yep. yeah. but it's not like you have to put a credit card out. Yep, so it's out there. To get the riff. basic information. You have to do RIF. I don't even wanna know what that stands for. Reading is <laughs> fundamental, don't oh. you remember oh. that, kid? <laughs> No, with you when you do an acronym, I'm sorry. Not even, not even, <laughs> when you, you didn't even listen is fundamental. So you didn't lift to no riff. I can't listen when you don't talk normal. I talk fine. <laughs> Yous are the ones who don't listen properly. Yous, Yous. <laughs> Yous all right, guys. so all that's Yous. General Motors in a nutshell. Again, they were super helpful. I think we called yeah, them maybe 50, 60 times they were great. Um, on it. If you have any questions around General Motors that we haven't touched on today or you need help with the website, well, you can always reach out and give us a holler. But iCar has some great tutorial videos on the RTS site to guide you through it. And with any OE, you're just going to have to get in there and poke and play around. Um, you'll find things in different places. You have to learn it, and then you need to repeat it. It can't you be something you do once a year. It's comfortable. Mm -hmm. If you're in there for a while, it's comfortable it's and easy. Yeah. And you start to learn where everything is. Yeah. Um, and it'll be in the same place for every, every GM car. So once you get mm -hmm. used to where things are in the body manual, you'll be good to go. All right. Next month, Subaru. Yep. Oh, boy. Um, we got some special guests coming in for the Subaru show. Um, we'll be talking about the cars and what's happening with their program. And they're bringing the WRX so I can test drive it, right? No. Yeah, and we're going to videotape? So. No. No. We're on no, no Ken no. block. Oh. Uh, he doesn't do Subies. Isn't he a Ford guy? I got, well, he's going to drive it like Ken. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I think I have like a no Subie <laughs> sticker on the driveway up there. where Because the, they get the big spoiler wings. Yeah. And just, yeah, that would like lower my reputation. So... <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I will leave that right there. We have four-wheel drive trucks out there, right? Okay. So, no, uh, we'll right be there. doing the Subaru show and have some special guests on that. Really excited about that one. That's how we'll mm -hmm. wrap up the year. Um, and then we will also, at the end of next show, announce what the changes are going to be for next year mm -hmm. as we make the OE show evolve. Oh, boy. Um, so get ready to see sparks flying and parts getting put on cars. So uh -oh. that's all I'm going to say. Because apparently... We're all not real technicians. Yeah, right. no, we don't know we what we're just, talking about. We just talk. We actually so. just talk. hands on, right? No, actually, yeah. Ben's Audi. So we got to prove it. Okay. Ben's Audi, Porsche, uh, Land Rover, Jaguar, just give me yeah. welding certificates. I don't have to pass the test. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. I don't have to physically do anything. Well, that's because you, they you, just you give threatened it to, me. to bust their kneecaps. When you walk <laughs> oh, listen, right, yeah. you know, we negotiate differently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, so off, but I couldn't refuse. We will see you next month on Repair University Live, OE edition. Thanks.